Hello, I'm there, my family and friends and my YouTube channel. Thank you for my faithful subscribers. Thank you again for coming back for another uh, evening and chat with Glenda on my So So Blessed channel. Thank you again for returning. I uh, hope you all having a blessed week so far and I uh, hope that uh, you're doing well in your families. I pray that all is well with you. Uh, yeah, so we won't be long again. Um, those of you new to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you like what you hear or uh, just popping in just to see what it's about. I hope you enjoy what you hear tonight. And thank you again for stopping by. Uh, those of you, thank you again for my faithful subscribers. Um, as always, I hope that you are getting something, something encouraging, something inspiring. As well as I hope when you're getting these things that you're sharing it with others. Um, tell somebody else about this channel and hopefully that, uh, you know, they'll come and join in and we can all just be encouraged together. All right. So again, here it is Wednesday. I'm just getting on to record this, <laughs> but anyway, as always, let's just go ahead and, um, we're going to keep this thing moving. Let's go ahead and let's just look to God for a word of prayer. Father God, I come to say thank you as always. Thank you God for your love and your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for who you are always. Thank you for your sovereignty. I just thank you, God. You are, you, you're good. There's no, not enough words to even express um, who you are to me and who you are to so many others. And so we love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, Holy Spirit. Um, your plan, your, your, your ways. I'm just grateful to you. Um, thank you every day that you allow us to see another day and that you protect us and keep us, oh God. Lord, as I get ready to go and to say these uh, few words of encouragement, I pray as always that they are edifying to your people, that it would be uh, glorifying as always to you, uh, none to me, but you get all the glory, God, you get all the praise. And I pray that someone out there that might pass by this channel will hear a word that will touch their hearts, that will change their lives, that will set them free or deliver them, oh God, and draw them close to you, that they will surrender their lives to you. I thank you, I honor you, I praise you in your son Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, my friends. So very quickly, um, just want to share this tidbit of, uh, of encouragement with you. I was again at work today just thinking about what I may say tonight. Didn't have anything particularly written down. I mean, I had some, you know, my nuggets, of course, in my phone written down, uh, but nothing in detail. So I'm just going to share with you one of the things I did have in my phone and I may have touched on this on one of my other videos, I can't remember, but it was something that um, the Holy Spirit dropped in my, uh, dropped in my spirit and um, it came to me again today. So I'm just gonna share that. And the topic is, uh, my discussion tonight is gonna be talking about um, be better than bitter, right? Be better than bitter. So um, at one time I think my topic was um, uh, better, not bitter but be better than bitter. We want to be better than a bitter person, right? So um, just want to quickly share um, a testimony. Let me give you my scripture first. Of course, a lot of my scriptures I love to share with you that I lean on and they help me in times of need. They lift me, they encourage me in times of need. So this one is Philippians, um, and I believe it's the fourth chapter and it's verses six through eight. And it says, uh, be anxious for nothing but everything but in everything by prayer and supplication. Make your request known unto God and may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then the next verse says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things, have, if there be any virtue, whatsoever things are praiseworthy, of good report, if there be any virtue, Think on these things, right? So it tell it closes out there. And I love that because it's talking about, uh, first of all, be anxious for nothing. Another version, I believe it's the NIV version that says, be careful for nothing. In other words, uh, uh, the cares of this world, right? Be anxious about, uh, about nothing. But if we're going to be careful for anything, uh, let it be done through prayer. In other words, there's another scripture that says, cast all your cares on him. So basically, there's nothing that I can handle of my own. There's nothing I can do out of my own strength, but give it to God. When I give it to God, that's when I can do. That's the best thing I can do. The best thing I can do to, uh, when dealing with any kind of circumstance in life 
is give it to Jesus. And that's one of my favorite scriptures. Let And then he says, I love this part. He says, let your request be made known to God. And then may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, let it guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen, this is what happens when you give your cares to God. This is what happens when you, you're not allowing yourself to become anxious or overwhelmed about things and circumstances and cares of this world that we, we have we can't do anything about. We have no control over, right? I can't control the things that are going to take happen in this world, uh, take course in this world. I can't control the things uh, uh, that people do in this world. But what I can do is control my reaction to it, my response to it. And the way I do that is I fall to my knees and give it to Jesus. Now, does this work all the time? No, uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not wanting, didn't, don't want to sit here and sound like, oh, this is all you got to do. Cross your T and dot your I. You're good. I don't always do this. There are times when the Holy Ghost has to, many times when the Holy Ghost has to remind me and say, hey, fall back on what you know. Pull out your scriptures. Re recite them. And this is something I do. I was just doing this last night. I, I was up at 3 o'clock this morning. Couldn't sleep. And uh, so I, I just felt the need. I said, okay, you know what? I need to pray. And I'm down on my knees. And the Holy Ghost is just telling me, cite your scriptures. Recite them. Sometimes if you don't know what to pray, just pray the scripture. My mother taught me that years ago. Pray the scripture. Pray. So just start reciting the scriptures. And that's praying. You're talking to God. You're praying that scripture over and over. And as you're doing that, it's, it's, it's strengthening you from the inside, right? So this is what I do. So um, and so talking about going back to the um, my topic, uh, be better than bitter. This is how you're going to be able to do it. The first thing that you, you have to do is cast that thing to God. Take it to him in prayer. We can't be better until we release it, right? I want to be better. I want to let go of whatever bitterness I have. I want to let go of whatever I'm holding on. In fact, there's a scripture that says um, uh, that we ought not to hold anything, right? We can't have anything that we're holding in our hearts. We have to uh, keep forgiveness in our hearts and let things go. Because the only person that is hurting is me. I think I was telling somebody uh, the other day that, you know, there are times when you can be mad at somebody and... You hold them people for what they did to you years ago or whatever. And they're not going on with their lives. And they just as happy-go-lucky, just as jolly. And you sitting moping and sulking and everything about something that, that, that they did to you. I don't care if it was years ago or just recently. But we have to learn to let that stuff go. Because if we're not careful, bitterness will set in. And bitterness is, it, listen, it, it's like it, it grows over time. It happens over time. And once that thing takes root, it is so hard to get that out. And then you have to find yourself, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking it to the Lord. And bit by bit, yes, it will happen. But it's not going to come out as easy because it didn't take easy, it didn't take a long time. Uh, it didn't get there overnight. It took time. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, be better than bitter. And the way we get better is we do it through prayer, first of all. Number one acknowledge that lord i need to take this thing to you i've been carrying it too long sometimes we carry things so long we don't even realize we're carrying it until one day it's like you're even about to have a breakdown and you're like why am i so burdened it's not it's not like anything's wrong in my life it's not like i'm you know i'm not financially struggling with well, things could even be well but you ever have that where you just went why am i sad why do i not feel joy or peace Maybe that I need to do some soul searching. Maybe I need to say, am I holding something? Have I not released something? Give it whatever it is. You may not even remember. You may not even know what it is, but it could be something. So just ask God, just do a cleanse. Lord, search me. Search me. There's a scripture too that says, search me. And if you find anything offensive, Lord, take it out and strengthen me. We got to take things to the Lord and release them so that we can be better than bitter because bitterness listen just like the word is bitter i don't like bitter tasting food i don't like some there are some foods that have a bitter taste until you season them and then they taste better right bitter is just a bitterness right you don't want that but i want to be better so season with the word of god whatever that is season it with the word of god season it with some prayer so that it can be better so that you can be better right quick testimony and then I'm getting ready to close it out because I just wanted to do a quick nugget and just to, you know let you let that marinate let you just uh, ponder on that scripture go to Philippians fourth chapter 
and read that. How to be anxious for nothing, but take everything to the Lord in prayer. Let your request be made known unto him. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Listen, I love that part of that prayer. Because there are times I have experienced where, you know, in, in my life and in my past pain, pains and my past hurts, I know that I should have been, you know, just angry and mad and just, but I had peace. And I'm like, Lord, this is nobody but you. There is no way I should be this happy. And you even, and you know, you, you even think yourself like, oh my gosh, I am handling this very well. Surprise, I'm, but no, not surprisingly, because that's what that scripture is talking about. When we give things to him the right way, when we release it to him and completely release it and don't go back and take it back. Guess what? That's the kind of peace you get to experience when all hell is breaking loose around you because you've given it to him. You can be right in the midst of the storm and have so much peace. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God I'm talking about, right? Quick testimony. And I'm going to share with you how that scripture worked for me and it's still working for me. So, um, uh, with that, you know, I'm not going to divulge a whole lot, but I'm going to be a little bit transparent here. But I'm not going to divulge, you know, names and go into a bunch of detail. But I have been uh, a victim of, um, don't want to use that word victim. But anyway, I have suffered with uh, um, betrayal in my marriage. I've been married twice, so, but I have suffered with uh, dealing with um, affairs, right? And um, with other women in my marriage. And it's devastating so devastating now this particular person uh um that uh my my ex-husband and my marriage you know was was with unfaithful with me to me with this person that person of course it took me years 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 to to let go yes the bible tells us to forgive and i say i forgave but the healing part of it takes some years when I say years it takes years it depends on your circumstance everybody is different but for me years I had to you know uh, um, I, yes I had to do a whole lot of praying but anyway long story short moving right along this other woman now um, uh, you know nothing and this is nothing to glory and I pray that you know I would not pray in sickness on anybody but this this person became ill and uh, um, unfortunately, deal, dealing with um, a disease, and so a life-threatening disease. And um, this person um, who at the time and years ago, that would have been a good thing for me. <laughs> I'm not laughing at anybody that have any disease, but I'm telling you, years, some years ago, I might would have been like, that's what you get. You reap what you sow. But being the child of God and praying through that, praying through my bitterness, praying through my hurt, praying through my pain, and the person that I am today, because I took that route, because I wanted to be better than bitter, and because I forgave, because I wanted to be better than bitter, and because I prayed for this person instead of saying, that's what you get, because I wanted to be better than bitter, let me tell you, just recently, um, and you all, I've shared with you all that I have a nonprofit organization for cancer care. And that's the disease that this person um, uh, um, has, um, has and is dealing with and battling with. And with my nonprofit organization, I'm just trying to help people. Uh, you know, my organization, the Lord gave me this ministry to try to help people, you know, so that they can have at least... Uh, uh, the best, the fullest quality of life that they can while they're battling this life-threatening disease. And so I'm just trying to do my part and find ways to help them feel better and do things for them to try to alleviate some of their stress and some of their pain or whatever it may be. However I can do that, whatever little way that I can contribute to this, uh, to their um, well-being, that's what my nonprofit organization is about and that's what God gave me. Well, I'm writing down a list of people. Who can I bless, Lord? Who can I bless, Lord? And those of you out there that are watching this and that you support my nonprofit, I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you supporting with your donations and whether you buy food from me, purchase dinners from me as a fundraiser or however you support, thank you so much. 
because this is what it's going towards this cancer ministry my nonprofit organization well i'm making a list of names of people that i know that may be suffering with this and how i can help them and i reach out to them and say hey um can you use this service my nonprofit office this service are you can you use anything can we do anything for you well the lord brought this person to my mind this other woman and i asked contacted her husband um and just FYI, we're all, you know, cordial. We're all, there's no bitterness. There's no bitterness on my part. We're all, you know, this is my ex-husband. And this, there's no bitterness. So anyway, I reached out to, um, I reached out to my ex-husband and said, hey, um, your wife, can she use this? Do you think she would mind uh, accepting service from my organization, my nonprofit organization? Now, Mind you, I'm saying, would she mind accepting service from me? Because now she's the wife. But I just wanted to make sure she was okay with accepting something from me, the ex-wife. Well, let me tell you, this, when I say that, I'm going to stop right there. Well, the answer was yes. The, the husband, my ex-husband, was like, thank you so much. I'm sure that she would appreciate that. Wow, thank you. I'm like, sure, no problem. Well, let me know. Just give me a time and a date, and I'll set the service up for her. Let me tell you, when I say be better than bitter, that is what I'm, and listen, I'm not saying this to gloat or to brag or nothing, but all I know is that when I did it, because the Holy Ghost placed her in my heart, and there was no effort, there was no like, oh, no, she would not go. My, immediately, I was like, oh, yes, yes. I called up my ex-husband and said, hey, do you think your wife could use and after I hung up, it didn't dawn on me until I hung up. And I said, wow, God, so that's what that feels like? That's what peace that surpasses all understanding feels like? Here I am offering help to this, this, this woman who I'm the, the reason I'm divorced from my ex-husband, the reason that my children and I are not together with their father. Lord, that is what I'm talking about when y'all say be better than bitter. And listen, I, I don't put that information out there to, to bash anybody. I'm so grateful that I can say that we are all friendly family together. That time was then and this is now. And all I can say is to God be the glory. To God be the glory that yes, there is no, there is no, no, no hostility there or any of that but just genuine care concern and compassion and that i give glory to god that is what i mean by be better than bitter because had i held on to this bit the bitterness it was there at one point trust me yes it was there and like i said it prayer it took prayer to get over a lot of that hurt and pain but i'm here today some years later able to to uh, speak to this other woman. There's no longer an other woman, but it's his wife now. But I'm able to, we're family, be able to uh, have family Christmas together. We have great, we share, uh, my grandkids are now her uh, um, step-grand, and you know, grandchildren, you know? But that's God. That's why it's, it's so important not to be bitter because guess what, had I held on to that, Everybody would be enjoying each other. Like my children go up there with my grandchildren. They go see their dad and she's their stepmom. And everybody's happy. But hey, there was a time when I would be sitting home alone, crying, angry. Because my children are up there with this other woman that I, at one point I just, I had nothing but contempt for. But who was hurting? Me. I was the one that was home crying, sulking, mad, angry, breaking things because I didn't release it. Because I didn't and yes, I had every right to be angry. Don't um, listen, if you're out there saying, "Well, you listen, it's a process." But at some point you got to let it go. Because it only hurts you. It eats away at you. But if you want peace and if you want to experience that scripture like I told you, peace he will give you that surpasses all understanding yeah this is what i'm talking about anytime you can welcome the woman who came between who the reason is that your marriage broke up 
and you all can now sit around at the same table and enjoy Christmas breakfast and come in, she comes into your home and everybody's just one big family and they throw you a birthday party and buy you gifts from the other woman. That's God. That's God. So all I want to do is share with you with my testimony. I pray that you, whatever you may have dealt with, you may not be dealing with any, anything, but in the future, we don't know what the future holds. You may encounter something in your future where this, this lesson, this encouragement will help you. Just remember, be better than bitter. And you do that through prayer and casting it on God and allowing him to make you better and rise above. All right, my friends, thank you so much. I hope that you've been encouraged. And I just want to just let you know that um, pray for me as I'll pray for you all out there that God will help us all to be better than bitter. All right. Until the next time, my friends, I am blessed. You are blessed. We are so, so blessed. Merry Christmas out there. <laughs>